very good morning to you all.
Ladies and gentlemen, galaxy of intellectuals, the esteemed dignitaries, scientists, participants from across the country, and dear students, a very good morning to you all. On behalf of the organizing committee, I welcome you to the inaugural function of the Naheb Kaas sponsored short term training program on genomics for improvement of horticultural crops, organized by the Division of Vegetable Science, IRI. First of all, I take the proud privilege of welcoming the dignitaries on the dais, Dr. Trilochan Mahapatraji, the DG and Secretary Dare, Dr. R.C. Agarwal, DDG, Education, Professor Kole, Dr. Rashmi Agarwal, Dean and Joint Director, Education, and Dr. T.K. Behra, Course Director. Before we go forward with the program, I kindly request our beloved director, Dr. A.K. Singh, to welcome the Honorable Dr. Trilochan Mahapatra, DG, ICR, and Secretary Jair, the chief guest of today's function, with a plant. Plant, please. I request the dignitaries on the dais to start the program by lighting of the lamp. Thank you all. I now request our director, Dr. A.K. Singh, to welcome the Honorable Dr. Trilochan Mahapatra with the point. I again request the director to welcome Dr. R.C. Agarwal, DDG Education with the plant. I also request the director to welcome Professor Chitrajan Kohli, Raja Ramana Fellow with the plant. Thank you, sir. I now humbly invite Dr. A. K. Singh, Director IRI, to kindly deliver the welcome address. A very good morning to each one of you. Honorable Chief Guest of today's function, Dr. Trilochan Mahapatra, Director General ICR and Secretary Dev, Dr. Agrawal, Deputy Director General Education, Professor Kohli, Professor Rajaramanna Fellow, Dr. Asmi Agrawal, Dean and Joint Director Education IRI, Dr. Behra, Coordinator of this program, Dr. Manjaya, Dr. Vishnathan, Dr. Saili, 
and all the distinguished faculty members from Division of Vegetable Science and dear participants. It is my privilege to extend a warm welcome to our chief guest today, who is one of the most distinguished alumni of this institute. And uh, the, the audience knows him so well that I really need not to uh, tell the details, but for the sake of the participants who have come from far distances from every uh, corner of the country to participate in this training program, I would like to tell you something which you might take as inspiration for your future career. Uh, Dr. Mahapatra did his uh, graduation in agriculture from OUT Bhuneshwar, and then he did his master's and PhD from IRI in biotechnology, in genetics, not in biotechnology specialization, but in division of genetics. And, uh, you know, then he joined as a scientist in the National Research Center on Plant Biotechnology and then rose to become principal scientist. During his uh, scientific career of uh, more than three decades at IRI and RCPB, he made tremendous contribution, particularly in the area of, you know, genomics, molecular markers, molecular breeding, and uh, genome sequencing. The outstanding research work got publication in journals like Nature, Plant Cell, and brought international recognition to this institute. I uh, vividly remember when he was preparing the rice genome sequencing project, and he used to sit long hour in Ganga International Guest House with the then ADG, Dr. Dhillon, discussing about the project. I don't know how many times, and, and that discussion will always happen in the evening hours from 6 o'clock till 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. And I happened to be a witness because I was in charge of the Ganga International Guest House, so I used to go there frequently. And uh, the project uh, took a shape and it brought the country at the international map. Uh, as a teacher, the contribution that Dr. Mahapatra has made is uh, phenomenal. Uh, his course on eukaryotic molecular genetics will always be overcrowded. There will be no space for people to sit. The classes will not last, you know, less than two and a half hours. Will always be extending beyond that, but still people will have the interest to listen to his presentation, not only from IRI, but from other institutes, including All India Institute of Medical Sciences. Many doctors used to come to understand and know how the science, and this was the time when the science of molecular breeding was just progressing, markers were just progressing. I had a special privilege of the interactions with him because we stayed together uh, as a next door neighbor in uh, Rohini sector 15. And morning at 8.30 we will get into the chartered bus and travel to institute and that was about one hour 15 minutes time where he will teach me and we will discuss at length you know, the things like uh, APPCR, AFLP, the differences between them, SSR, ISSR, SNFs had not come by that time. But this discussion will go on for hours. Evening, I will not have that opportunity because evening I used to leave 4.30 back in the chartered bus. But he will take a bus around 8.30 or so to go to Wazirpur Depot, I think 5.85 it was. And from Wazirpur Depot, another change to uh, uh, sector 15 Dwarka and will never reach before 9.30, 10 o'clock in the night. So you can imagine the tenacity and uh, the commitment that he had to teaching program, to research program is phenomenal. And that is what keeps us guiding, motivating, and is motivation for each one of the students who are participating in the training program. There is no limit. And the background from which he comes the area from which he comes, if you still, we had, uh, on some occasion, we had to go to his place. And uh, it, it, many of us come from rural background, but you can see the struggle for his school also. He had to go on cycle, maybe 30 kilometers cycling, crossing few, two, three rivers uh, on the way. So what I'm trying to say is that there is no limit to the growth that you can make, provided you have commitment, perseverance, and dedication to your work, and that is what is testified by the <coughs> life of Dr. Mahapatra. Welcome you, sir, for this uh, program, and I'm sure the students will be greatly motivated. I would also like to welcome Dr. Agrawal, our very dynamic 
Deputy Director General Education, who is also a distinguished alumni of IRI from the statistics. And uh, he was Registrar General of uh, Protection of Plant Varieties and Farmers' Rights Authority, wherein he brought several changes, many innovative changes, and harmonization of the laws internationally. And as DDG Education, he's providing great support to IRI. Soon after his joining, I know he came to me and uh, after I had taken over as director, and he came up with the proposal of almost 3.5 crores if we can modernize our library in terms of providing compactors because space is very much limited and how we can store more number of books. And since then he is following every day what is the progress, whether the tender has been floated or not, the technical specifications are decided or not. That kind of follow-up I hard to, it is hard to find actually generally, but that's what Dr. Agrawal is. Thank you again Dr. Agrawal for being here and he is the uh, main uh, mentor and pillar behind the NHEP cast program that we are doing. Uh, Professor Kole is one person who is again a admiration for each one of them and I envy him for his uh, ability and sustenance to you know uh, write books and edit books. The numbers runs into I think 141 because he keeps it updating on the Facebook also. The genome series in plants, large number of them he has done. Uh, thank you, Professor Kohli, for being here and for motivating our students uh, in, in during the training program. I also would like to welcome Dr. Rasmi and my colleague, Dr. Behra, who is a very competent scientist, has got uh, good international exposure in terms of vegetable molecular breeding, and he has made his presence felt at the international level as well through his publication and work. So I am sure that this training will take all the students who have joined the training program uh, to make them learn new areas and use molecular breeding in the field of uh, you know improvement of vegetable crops thank you very much thank you sir i now invite dr tk behra professor of division of vegetable science and course director to give a brief introduction about the training most respected honorable DICR and Secretary Dear, uh, and DDG Education, Dr. Asiya Karwal, and Professor Chitranjan Kole, my teacher, and Dr. A.K. Singh, sir, the, or the director of this institute, and Rasmi Agarwal, ma'am, the dean and joint director of education of this premier institute. Head of the divisions, and Madam Sally, and uh, Dr. Vishnathan, Dr. S.K. Singh, professors, scientists, faculties of all horticulture, the discipline is here, because this topic says it is in genomics for improvement of horticulture crops. So this is a student's training. So we have many of the students come from the different places. And uh, as we know that uh, we have a really privilege that we have all the persons from the genomics side, the genomics uh, and also the genetic resources, which is the important for our program. And for horticulture crops, as you mentioned, the just a, some of the things like in horticulture. Uh, sir, uh, in India, we don't have any progress in horticulture in the genomics uh, sense of point of view. But if you say that it's a genomic data if you are, what you have generated, that is there throughout the world. If you see there are 181, thus uh, horticulture species already sequenced. And 181, and on, only we are only in the tomato genome at the part, and other things already been sequenced uh, throughout this country. And uh, in vegetables, we have 42, and horticulture fruits and fruits we have 64, and also in plantation crops, then spices and floriculture crops we have uh, data is there in this world as a whole, and it is there. But uh, if you say the uh, application part, also we have not done so much of these things. That's why we have to have a lot of works in these horticulture crops, particularly for the basic science and other things will concern. So this is, the, uh, this is not that only the training for inaugurations, but it is also in the group of horticulture scientists and other people of the students who are working, we have to work for the genomics and basic science. And that's why we have organized and we have a panel of uh, people, uh, this uh, dignitaries who are here, and really we are really pride that it is there, we are having some of the works we can do in the future with respect to this one. So this is the starting point for us and for the horticulture group as a whole and we can also take all the uh, tools and techniques from the different disciplines 
and we can definitely develop the good, infra uh, good infrastructure as well as the genomic resources particularly in concern. So uh, coming to this uh, program, sir, we have uh, uh, 89 students and applied from the different universities. There are 23 universities have applied 89 students. And out of which uh, we have selected only uh, 27, 27 st uh, students because uh, uh, we have to have only uh, 25, and but we have selected 27 because there are a lot of, uh, uh, means uh, people also want to have the students want because they are very much interested for this particular to come to the IRE as to have the work and also to get some, some knowledge with respect to the different genomic resources. And we also have the program in which we have selected these students. Those are working in the genetics particularly, not they are working in particular in the genomics approaches, but still they have a very good knowledge in the genetics and they are also taking the different minors in this case. Uh, so uh, in that case, we have 27 from uh, uh, 14, uh, 14 uh, we have 14 uh, states, Punjab, uh, Uttar Pradesh, West Bengal, Jharkhand, Andhra Pradesh, Kerala, Delhi, Jammu and Kashmir, Gujarat, then Bihar, and we have also student from uh, yeah, Arunachal Pradesh. So these are the uh, states from which about uh, 16 university students are there. So totally it will be 16 universities and 40 uh, states. So uh, I think uh, uh, they are most welcome to this uh, premier institutes and they are, have a dream. They are already mentioning in the, in the social uh, website also that we have to come here and have to work uh, uh, to not get, uh, get some knowledge in respect to the horticulture sciences concerned, as well as genomic sciences concerned. So I must welcome all, all these students here, I think. Uh, and we have about 29 classes and about 19 practicals, and all the classes will be taken uh, with the different uh, other sister institute, in, including NBPGR, then NIPB, as well as NIPGR. Uh, and also we have uh, the most of the work of these classes will be taken by these genetics divisions where we also uh, have the opportunity to have uh, students there in these genetics divisions and we also uh, definitely have all the courses you can see which is planned here starting from that of this uh, advances in different crops itself to the next generation sequencing even for the genome editing we have also programs there. So all things we have categorized and put it in the in this uh, uh, programs and sch schedule. So I think it will be all of will definitely all the students will definitely get succeed for that. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. I now request the student participants who have come from across the country to introduce themselves, giving a brief about the university, state, and research work. You can give your name, your university, state, and the work in which you're doing. I'm Bibin from Tamil Nadu, and um, I do my UG from PNAU. I do my UG. You're audible. Go ahead. I do my UG from PNAU. Uh, that means uh, related to uh, 
गूगल माइक भी मैंने दिया था वो पास ही नहीं हो रहा पास करने बच्चे उसको बोले कि तभी तो कैमरे में ऑडियो आएगी मैंने इसके लिए दिया था ये खाली कैमरे के ऑडियो के लिए तो उसे लाइव भी नहीं देगा ना कैमरे में तो आएगा and my research topic is morphogenetic and biochemical characterization of small size pototubers and production of passion uh, pototubers uh, to in vitro to pollinate you know uh, my name is dr kam um, i am from arunachal pradesh and i am the uh, nsc in medical science and my topic is uh, genetic diversity in liquid uh, leaf master leaf master that's that's the concept I did my UG from <coughs> PG from CAU in Pal, and now I'm pursuing PhD from CAU and Association. Uh, my work is on genetic diversity of citrus reticulata using SSM methods. Good morning, respected teachers. Myself, Krishna Jha. I'm coming from Kerala, and I pursued my graduation from UN and Kerala in Maharashtra. And my post-graduation from the PhD in Dapoli. Now I am doing my PhD degree. In the group drumstick and the in the university university of horticulture science model board <coughs> and uh, working on the different aspects like morphological and molecular characterization for genotypes, its nutritional improvement and the uh, tissue culture problems. Thank you. Myself, uh, Navina from Tamil Nadu. I did my UG and PG in a field in Kanthapur, Tamil Nadu. And currently I am pursuing a PhD, a third PhD in the Department of Horticulture and Landscape Architecture in Vienna in Kanthapur. My research work is on induced mutagenesis in hibiscus for enhancing ornamental as well as the commercial value. This is Jay Kusatom from Tamil Nadu Agriculture University. Currently I am doing a science PhD in Department of Digital Science. My research area is breeding for 
TLCB and lambda resistant through multivalent advanced generation inter intercast in domain. Good morning to all the dignitaries. Myself Sudhika, I am from Dr. Vyasar Articulture University, Andhra Pradesh. I did my undergraduation and post graduation from Dr. Vyasar Articulture University. Now I am pursuing my PhD and my research topic is genetic analysis and validation of markers related to power military resistant and other traits in children. Thank you. Good morning, myself Prashant Sivilpati from PNAU. Back to you. Yudhi, I get from PNAU. Back to you. 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 Thank you, dear students. I now invite Professor Chitrajan Kohli to say a few words. Dear uh, distinguished dignitaries on the dais, specifically Director General ICA, Professor Mahapatra, Dr. Agarwal, a dynamic person leading in agricultural extension, Dr. A.K. Singh, Director IRI, Dr. Agarwal, Dr. Behra. We all know that uh, the concept of genome, the word genome came in 1928, and it was coined by Dr. Winkler. And the term genomics came in 1986, and during that period, actually, molecular map construction, mapping of genes and QTL started. But to be very honest, in India, genomics started in the 90s. And that time, most of the people were busy in genetic transformation. So in biotechnology, most of the scientists were engaged in genetic transformation. but it is a proud privilege to tell that one person who is in the dais today started one pioneering work in genomics, that is construction of genome library in chickpea. He that time was working with Professor Vijay Chopra, another legendary scientist in India. And later on, he continued his molecular mapping works in Indian master. And the first molecular map from Indian soil was developed by him. Uh, it was maybe 1995, if I am not wrong, isn't it? 
So then he went on to map genes, for instance, to uh, biotic stresses. If I am not wrong, he was mapping white grass resistance, albugo candida, in Indian mustard, and then followed by QTL mapping. So we have, you have, that pioneering plant genomics person to today on the desk, and a lot of things already have been enunciated by Professor A.K. Singh, present director of IRI, so I don't like to elaborate, but one thing I must mention, that applic application of genomics, hardcore genomics started in the early part of the century, precisely after publication of Aerodopsis genome sequence. And it was followed by RISE, the first crop plan to be sequenced. And again, Professor Mohapatra was a party to that. This paper was published in Nature, as Dr. Singh told. And he continued, and this continued, and always he was uh, included in the teams of genome sequencing. Uh, I think tomato was followed by that. I don't like to elaborate. So, and I believe IRI is the premier institute in the world, not only in India. It has led green revolution uh, in the total developing countries uh, in the world. And I believe using genomics in all types of crops, agronomic and horticulture, will lead in evergreen revolution. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I kindly request Dr. R.C. Agarwal, the DDG Education, to address the gathering. Honorable Sakti Dayar and DG ICR, Dr. Sulishan Mahapatra Ji, Dr. A.K. Singh, Director of this esteemed institute, Dr. Kole, a renowned uh, scientist, Dr. Bahra, uh, Dr. Rasmi Agarwal, my colleagues uh, from IRI, senior faculty, and dear participants. Uh, I think for the students, uh, you should be proud that you are attending uh, this important training program on important topic from the important institute. Uh, it's really uh, a lifetime opportunity that you get something from IRA. So I compliment each uh, of the participants that uh, they have uh, been selected out of a big number, uh, keeping in mind the social equity, so keeping in mind the gender balance, which I could see. Uh, dear students, uh, I think uh, again it's a matter of pride for you that you have the great uh, visionaries sitting on the dais. You can have, uh, as Dr. A.K. Singh has spoken, Dr. A.K. Singh himself is a great source of inspiration. The, the kind of life he was narrating for Dr. Mahapatra, I think his life is also the same struggling life, which I think you may know at some other platform, but not uh, today. But you can suddenly know that how he struggled and how he has reached to this position, a prestigious position, which is a dream for all. So with that a small note, uh, let me just tell you uh, that under this NAHEP CAST program, uh, this is uh, a regular phenomena by this institute. And whenever I come uh, for attending such programs, uh, not all programs, or two, three programs I have attended, uh, I can see that from a very, very big number they are selecting, uh, there is a huge competition. Like for this also they were saying 90 uh, applications were there. So it's a very fair selection and uh, they always keep in mind every kind of uh, thing, like there is a suitable representation from all these states which we are seeing today. There is a suitable, suitable representation uh, of, uh, they keep in mind this uh, gender balance also. Okay, and a special provision which we have in our uh, NEIGP as such, because it's a, uh, there are three subcomponents. So, and each subcomponent, we always say that you have to keep in mind the social equity. Uh, so, we have an equity action plan. 
so that also is uh, kept into mind so uh, to dg sir i like to just say that under any hep we have a target of around 90000 persons to be trained it's a big number and recently this number was uh, reviewed by world bank and till uh, february till january we have uh, achieved a target of around 24000 we have a online tracking system uh, that is called uh, project monitoring and tracking system where on day to day basis all the partners they have to update the various parameters various indicators we have around 62 indicators and how many beneficiaries are there this is also one of the indicator like placement ratio okay. like uh, the, the girl students like uh, how many students are going abroad so there are many parameters and uh, in all the parameters we have the base values and uh, uh, periodically whenever the report is submitted to the world bank or to uh, icr we take help only of the pmds so under that i think iira is contributing a lot for uh, training the uh, the human resource for bringing the human resource to make the challenges to meet the challenges in the future i think uh, that's a great effort of this uh, uh, great institute and i should compliment uh, the director and the whole staff that they regularly i think once in month i get, i could see the posters at uh, at the gate that there is some program of nhcb going on so that's really something great now friends the project uh, which is uh, under which you are attending this program it is a very prestigious project uh, the total budget is around uh, 1100 crores but the kind of opportunities which are being given to the students i think it has never happened in the past in future i don't know uh, how we are going to sustain this but we'll make some plan for the future also when where the even undergraduate students are getting opportunity to go abroad for 3 months 6 months at the cost of 10 to 20 lakhs so that's really a lifetime opportunity and these opportunities has to be availed by these students every student cannot go abroad because uh, of many reasons reasons because of the limited resources but a student who is going abroad or a student who is going to the best of the uh, institute for his internship those best of the institutes may be within india also so they have to really uh, give this message to other students and have to motivate other students also that what are the best opportunities in agriculture how best you can contribute for the society how best you can uh, you can uh, meet the challenges of the future uh, by availing these facilities and uh, sir one more thing i would like to just inform uh, last year uh, there was an increase of 60% applicants for appearing in this all india exams uh, entrance exams for the aggregate uh, you know 15% seats of the ug are being filled up through icr uh, Uh, ICR quota and 25 percent in uh, in MSc and PhD. So there was a 60 percent increase. Now this year I have asked all my uh, partners, 46 partners, uh, 46 uh, aggregate universities, that please conduct a workshop during the month of February. Already around 20 workshops have been completed by calling school principals, science teachers, and by calling parents. So whoever wants to come and just. explain what are the different opportunities in agriculture and through my analysis i have just found out the only reason why students are not motivated towards agriculture is because they are not aware of the opportunities the facilities which are there and once they are explained they get so excited to appear for this and they want uh, once they are explained they want to come to agriculture by choice so by choice you must have seen after 12 class most of the students they may be either preparing for medical or engineering but hardly we find that after 12th class they are preparing for agriculture so once they are not getting somewhere then they will think of okay what are the other options but that attitude we want to change and we want the best of the best brains towards the agriculture and that's what we are making the efforts to, through this project sir so we are uh, uh, i have already compiled a list 
uh, of all the universities where the IPR cells are there. And accordingly, we are going to have very strong IPR cells in all the universities. And uh, similarly, I have made a, a concept note for making a placement cell also in all the universities so that there is a networking. I was asked by uh, Madam Purvi Mehta during uh, my uh, recent visits that she wanted some three, four persons of say particular uh, discipline, but she was saying she could not get. Everybody was saying you contact this university, they were saying no, you contact that, that university. So there was no networking of all the placement cells, no uniform uniformity in the, in the procedure of the placement cells. So that also now we are trying to target that how in all universities we should have uniform guidelines, we should have a networking of all placement cells. So if somebody approaches us as a DDG education, we should immediately flash it through that network. Okay, this is the requirement. And if somebody knows, they can. The third thing, sir, uh, which we are going to do within this month and next month is the creation of alumni network. And already uh, some 10 universities uh, under this NIH, uh, they have conducted a big workshop of all the alumni. And many universities uh, are saying that the, the alumni who are well placed, who are entrepreneurs, they are coming forward to support the universities in various activities. And that is what beyond any HEP we want. So somebody is just trying to sponsor some buildings, some hostels, some they want to sponsor some, some students. So that also for the sustainability we are trying to make through this project, that how uh, the alumni network is there. And at the central level, uh, we are building a software uh, through which there will be an alumni network of all the universities. And the uniform software will be used by all the universities for this particular purpose. So there are many other uh, things which we are trying to do, but uh, I'll not explain all those things, but only compliment each one of you and uh, thank uh, our head of the family, Dr. Uh, Mahapatra ji, that he is giving a new direction for uh, attracting youth uh, through education division and to uh, Dr. A.K. Singh that uh, I can see a new energy is flowing in IRA after he has joined. In a short span of time, a lot of new things he has done. And I also propose certain changes in the academic council meeting. So let us hope that for the betterment of the students, we come up, we work jointly, and uh, can further uh, bring uh, the, the, the standards of the education, agriculture education uh, at a high level which is the motto of any HEP, to bring the agriculture quality at a very high level and to bring it more relevant for the social cause. So thank you once again and uh, compli my compliments again to the students for getting selected for this training program and all the best for the students. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Uh, now is the time for the release of the book, so I kindly request the chief guest, Dr. Trilochan Mahapatra, to kindly re release the two books and I uh, request the other dignitaries to join. The first book is the Training Manual on Genomics for Improvement of Horticultural Crops, edited by Dr. T.K. Behra, Dr. Amit Kumar Goswami and Dr. Kojarat Singh Chan. The second book is The Bitter God Genome, edited by Professor Chitrajan Kole, Dr. Hideo Matsumura, and Dr. T.K. Benra. Thank you.
I now invite our Honorable DGICRN Secretary Dear Dr. Trilochan Mahapatra to share his few words of wisdom to the August gathering. Good morning, everybody. Dr. Agarwal, DDG Education, Dr. A.K. Singh, Director of Prestigious Indian Agriculture Research Institute, Professor Chitranjan Kole, Dr. Raja Ramana Fellow, and also ex Vice Chancellor of Vidhan Chandra Krishi Vishwavidyale, Dr. Rashmi Agarwal. Dr. Tushar Kanti Vera, colleagues of the DAIS, faculty, students, and particularly the trainees who have come from outside. A very hearty welcome on my own personal behalf, on behalf of the Indian Council of Agriculture Research, to each one of you. At the outset, let me thank uh, Director IRI for inviting me, in fact, to Dr. Vishnathan who is PI of the CAS project. He contacted me and subsequently Dr. Bera also. And then Dr. A.K. Singh, director himself. So though I didn't have this uh, scheduled uh, program in my engagements today, I had uh, other things, I had to postpone that. Then I thought I'll come here. Earlier also I came another occasion in this uh, CAS program. Uh, because I am here nearby and I am also, uh, as it was said, I, has been, I have been a student of IRI and continue to be a student. So that learning process continues. So I try to find time and today we are, I am here. More importantly to know each one of you who have come from different places. Uh, to participate in this training, caste training program on genomics for improvement of horticultural crops. You are fortunate today that you have teachers to teach what you are expected to learn. And uh, those days when we initiated, so there are no teachers actually to teach and solve the problems that we were facing. We had teachers who did uh, teach us, you know, the fundamentals of uh, molecular biology and uh, DNA techniques. Professor S.L. Mehta, who then rose to become the Deputy Director General, was Dean here and Deputy Director General uh, Education. And also Professor K.R. Kondal, who subsequently became director of the National Research Center for Plant Biotechnology, and Dr. I.M. Santa, who was also a principal scientist and professor in biochemistry. And subsequently, my own teachers, Professor Chopra, Professor R.P. Sharma, at the National Research Center for Plant Biotechnology. So they are the teachers who taught us <coughs> and uh, gave us the fundamentals of how to really do things. But when you go inside, as Professor Kohli said, 1986 is the watershed year. In 85, the linkage map concept was published in Schumann. And in 86, the papers appeared in tomato and maize. And uh, first of all, conceptualizing map construction and then subsequently the maps appeared. And that time was the starting point. And in 87, when I was planning for my own PhD program for uh, a similar work, and uh, though we knew that uh, how to isolate DNA, but isolation from brassica young leaves took me six months to standardize, to get good quality of DNA. And those days were the days of ultra centrifugation to get purified DNA 
and hundreds of DNA samples were put to ultra centrifugation to get pure DNA for southern blot hybridization. And to get results, it takes 15 days, at least a week. So, and all radioisotopes sitting behind me and then in front of me for four years. So those are the kind of uh, situations when you have to struggle. And uh, we had to identify low copy sequences for hybridization. And uh, we didn't know actually how to really get it. And I read quite a bit of uh, literature and started planning how to get it. When I started dot blotting DNA, and you would not imagine the specifics that we had to really design ourselves to get a wonderful dot blot. And they were even better than what was there then in the textbooks in global level. And that's the kind of southern blot and <laughs> dot blots which we generated. Uh, so Professor Deepak Pentel was those days in Terry, he came back from US and after many years of postdoctoral program and PhD in the UK. And uh, you know, he looked at my thesis and they said, you work here or in the US? So I don't believe that you can do such kind of uh, things here. So the struggle that we went through ourselves, Southern Blood took another six months to be standardized. We're not getting anything in chickpea and then I moved on to Brassica and then we succeeded. And then that is how, then subsequently chickpea also worked. And uh, these two crops where we focused on. So why I'm trailing this, that the, when you don't have anybody around to give those kind of inputs, as, as I said, we had teachers to give those fundamentals, but the uh, you know, support with regard to specific requirements for developing molecular market system was not there actually in 80s in India. Everybody was trying to do something, but there were the problems. But anyway, so what I was trying to say and emphasize that whatever we learned, whatever you'd learn through these struggles, trials, that make you the best in the sense that you don't have to depend on anybody. And uh, you would develop a mastery over that. So that is the kind of point, and that is what I would uh, tell at the outset, that all of the trainees that you have come from different institutions, universities, and in fact those who are working here, and this is the point, you know, borrowed ideas and all that would not take you far, far, farther. So you have to have your own ideas while working on the ideas of others. And that is how, how you are established as individual scientist, having your own strength. And Dr. Kole was telling, Dr. A.K. Singh said that we were discussing in bus and all that. But the kind of his own idea Dr. A.K. Singh has put in, that is unparalleled. It is not just you can get some idea from somebody and then you will click. That would not happen. May have may happen once, not more than that. So it's Dr. A.K. Singh who has put in whole idea into it and then developed the whole field of translational aspects of it. So he's, he's an example. So likewise, you know, when I was doing QTL mapping, so I went to ISRI, there was nobody actually who worked in this particular area. So there are difficulties to explain actually what I want actually. Now, how do we do QTL mapping? That was, you know, late 80s. And the first seminar when I delivered on QTL mapping, uh, not many people actually believe that QTL can be mapped. And, uh, and the people thought that they're all abstract things. And, uh, uh, and uh, when we say mapping, it has to be physical. So when there is nothing physical, so how do you map actually? And even the quantitative genetics teacher those days was a brilliant teacher. In fact, did not really believe this, that it can be really mapped and then subsequently, 
when I talked about cloning of those, and that was again another hard area to actually believe that it can be cloned. And those, those days, uh, you know, uh, not a single gene was a clone actually. So, uh, so uh, uh, when I talked, uh, you know, through schemes and I developed schemes myself on how to do marker assisted breeding, when I used to teach students. So, you know, you didn't have anything in the net and the nowhere, you know, there were only some papers here and there. And my initial papers of QTL mapping was based on the isogynes, not actually DNA markers. Published in genetics and crop science and then Weber and then, you know, others. So, uh, so those papers, they were really guideposts, uh, you know, on QTL mapping. So you derive concepts from somewhere and then try to develop some schemes and how to really go for marker-assisted breeding and pyramiding. Pyramiding, which I used to teach uh, and I made a, made a slide on those, how we can pyramid in those days. And I started taking classes in 89, 90, I remember, when I was still a student. And I used to teach this and started in 92 when I came back as a scientist and started teaching. So, the lessons from this is that when you trade a path alone, it's the toughest thing to do, but you learn so much. But you have to have courage to trade the path alone. And uh, that is how you also so, so make the path for others. And that is a point which is very hard to do, but then it's very satisfying to do that. Uh, when I was isolating DNA, plasmid DNA for southern blood hybridization and all that, hundreds and thousands of them were there. So I had to spend uh, 36 hours at a stretch. I didn't go for anything, so I was there in the lab. So. So that's the kind of determination you have to have to move in the direction that you want to move, actually. And you think that you'll have uh, four, four, three, four hours of work and then, you know, so many other things to do. And you can do something, but you can't. You know, you uh, uh, give 100%, uh, uh, then you get uh, the results as you expect. So my suggestion would be, you have come for training and the colleagues would tell you how to do DNA isolation. I was looking at those DNA isolation, all those things and sequencing. But uh, that's not really enough. That's not really enough. Training is just to expose you. You have been already working, some of you, in this area. But there, is many thing, there are many things beyond that. And that you have to actually aspire for. And how you are spared, that depends on individuals, and then certainly it will define what you become. When I was trying to do QTL mapping, so as I said, my ISRI experience didn't get much. There was one Dr. Prem Narayan who used to be in the central office, so who was also director of ISRI and all that. So he tried to understand, okay, explain me with all derivations and then. <laughs> The single factor analysis of variance. And you'll be told, you should be told how it is done. Today we go for some software, put the data, and then get some results, and then we don't know what we are getting. We don't understand the fundamentals. And we have uh, 10 markers, and then you know you will you know how many pair of interactions you will get. You know, you get something thousands and thousands of interactions, and you start writing your thesis without understanding how many biological interactions are possible actually based on 10 loci if you assume that. That is what, you know, students start doing and that should not be done. So try to understand the fundamentals of it. Not easy, it requires a bit of background of statistics and mathematics. But if you want to really be in this area, you must understand. And. Uh, Dr. Kohli was back uh, those days from US and uh, he came to NRC plant biotechnology. In that sense, he showed me 
how to use QTL uh, map uh, in map maker module to do QTL mapping. Using map maker, particularly the interval mapping. So that is how you pick up, you know, single marker analysis, single factor ANOVA, and then QTL mapping using intervals. And subsequently, we did composite interval mapping. And those papers which we published those days from India, they were the first ones actually. Dr. Kole said map and subsequently the QTL ones, they were the first ones from the country. Not often actually cited, because we published in Indian journals, they're not often cited, but they are the first ones from the country. They were very tough ones because Southern hybridization, as I said, kind of long procedures that you have to follow. So, so friends, you keep your minds, eyes, ears open to learn from everybody. That is the best part. And acquire from everybody, from your friends, from your teachers, from the books, from journals, from you know, I don't know how many of you go to library nowadays. You know, that's another part. You know, when you come here, I take this opportunity to tell you that uh, my best learning happened during MSc. Not PhD. PhD, I started working and then day, and day in and day out, I'll be there in the lab. But best part was MSc. That time, I'd go to library and then sit there and learn, you know, cell, you know, cell gives mini reviews. They're the toughest ones to actually understand because unless you read uh, previous 10, 20 papers, you will not understand what they are actually talking about. And when you do that, in the process I collected huge literature. And those days my professor, you have some money given for this purpose. A professor used to question, what are you doing all this, Jaraksing so many? <laughs> Every time Xerox <laughs> bills will be submitted to, you know, professor for approval. So he used to question me. So, so that gives a very broad understanding. So I hope you'll have that kind of interest. Acquire from every source and read. Read the original papers. Otherwise, you will not develop that kind of background. As I said, by borrowing, you can't sustain for a long time. So this is uh, what I would uh, say. Genomics for improvement of horticultural crops. So when we started tomato genomics, genomics in this country, nobody did, you know, anything. We didn't know ourselves what is how to do genomics research. We used to teach something very basic in the class. So without that, we ventured into it and got about 50 crores those days in 99, 2000. And that was first of its kind project in the country. So, you know, you will get support, but then you have to have firm faith in what you are doing. And unless you have that faith, nobody is going to support you. And you have to confidently say that you will deliver without knowing anything without doing anything in that area. We were telling confidently that we will do it. So that is the kind of uh, thing. That is how genomics started, rice genome started, and subsequently tomato genome. And then, uh, you know, our labs in NRCPB were open to all the people and IRI, and uh, of course, horticulture was open. And that is how my name is there in rose, in a mango, in a, Karela and uh, maybe 20 crops of horticulture, not less than that. So, you know, that's also another part of it, that if you are too possessive, you don't contribute much. Maybe you will publish few papers and then get some awards, that's okay. But if you are open, you build a whole world for yourself and for the nation. And that is the another point I would like to say from my own experience, that if you are open, that you build a whole world for yourself. And if you are a narrow, clumsy, and then you have a very small world, either you want a small world for yourself or a very big world for yourself, so that you can determine. 
and that's another aspect of your development i think you will take care so time has uh, gone and then i think i have spoken for 20 minutes but coming to genomics per se i'm sure you will be learning quite a bit say structural genomics component and functional genomics component there are two fundamental aspects to this when you say that you have to sequence genome and you have to develop some tools for further use in breeding for application there are many different applications from structural genomics when we we started structural genomics uh, you know was initiated in the form of developing saturated genome maps and you can ask this question what is a saturated genome map saturation needs to be really defined and i used to define it in the classes but i believe you will be told about it but anyway so the saturated genome maps and subsequently sequencing base by base the whole genome and you have everything there all the features the structural features are there before you for the whole genome so once that is available that's a big tool tool for designing markers tool for designing to uh, you know for uh, tools for functional genomics tools for doing you know even transgenics so all these follow from that whole genome sequence analysis and this is what is actually the starting point but that's not the end point that's what many people believe that if you sequence the genome everything is done actually this is just a precursor to do many things subsequently and in fact in this country we started genome sequencing continued sequencing many genomes wheat and participating wheat genome sequencing chickpea peas and pea so on and so forth and then even we have sequenced by now mango jute and and other crops so this is continuing but and the, and then we started taking advantage of this in rice tremendously we have taken advantage and that is what i was telling dr ak singh your own director applying a mind to translational part of it and then developing that whole area but in other crops we haven't really done much i was compiling total varieties we developed through marker assisted breeding and this was uh, totally about 48 of them we have developed and when we did the, the first uh, we published in 2000 uh, i mean developed and released in 2007 in rice and subsequent to that about 46 of them have been developed so and you find majority of them are in rice and then followed by wheat and maize and other crops maybe one or two examples in the horticulture probably there is no example of marker assisted breeding to develop a variety in horticulture so in that sense you know when we say that we have so many genome sequence so quickly these trainees should be told how to develop markers out of this sequence validate them we have so many papers published on this and then immediately put to use and if can learn if they can learn that they can actually go to this genome sequences and then get direct benefit immediate benefit out of it those days we used to start struggling with rflp then rapd and then aflp and we went on actually in evolutionary terms if you see you know myself started with rflp and then in fact uh, you know did, did some isozyme at well as well and then moved on to snp so you know this is a kind of perspective that has brought but then what is important for you is you know designing that kind of markers dr cole said that they are highly heterozygous and so on and so forth and if you have codominant markers you don't care for heterozygosity and snp is are codominant and so also the uh, micro satellites and i'm sure you can derive maximum benefit out of these genome sequences and then you know design your own markers choose a crop appropriately and then move on and some of you are doing phd and uh, you know now itself you can take advantage of that information which is available so this is one aspect of it the other is that if you are 
believing and under, more interested in the fundamentals is so much to do from the genome sequence. So genomics in entirety, I do not know how you are going to be exposed to, whether it is only translational component or there are some fundamental aspects. So understanding the structural variations there, tremendous structural variations are there. From evolutionary viewpoint, how relevant they are. From crop application, even translational aspect, how important they are. Not only in the coding part of it, the non-coding part of it. In fact, we published a paper on non-coding, you know, uh, microsatellites, and how important they are. And similarly, how important they are even in repetitive regions of the genome. We often believe they are junk, but they, are, they play so important roles, even the, you know, the mobile elements. So I think the entirety, if you study the genome structure itself and try to understand what it is, I believe they will be told about it, and they can go with a, a much a better information about it. And beyond that, somebody said you were going to do transcriptomics and then so on and so forth, and we did that you know, almost 10 years ago, and uh, people now still continue doing that. And it gives a whole lot of information. You know, whether you make contigs or you go by ESTs and all that, and then you do comparisons, identify genes which should be expected. But that is again the starting point of another huge work which should be awaiting you. You'll get 1,000 genes up regulated, 2,000, 5,000 down regulated, and you know, do some pathway analysis and then find out, you know, maybe another 100 genes and 200 genes to actually to deal with. Not easy. So, you must know how to really narrow down to few and then move beyond. But all this genomics and transcriptomics and genome variation at the global level when you do multiple genome sequences of different varieties. So, all these have to again relate to your phenotype. So, unless you do phenotyping appropriately, you will not really get much of results in translation. But I must tell you one thing here in pheno phenotyping, that gross phenotyping mostly we confine to. But if you talk about Karela anti-diabetic property and so on and so forth, and maybe there will be a quantitative nature to the compound which is responsible for this, and if you do that, you have to go down to metabolite profiles. Unless you do phenotyping at the metabolite level, you will not make any sense out of your application using this transcriptome and then genome information. So what I'm trying to tell you, that when you talk of genomics, I used to come, come, you know, put everything under genomics, whether it is functional and the functional component, even metabolism, metabolite profiling has a functional component of it. So, Though we, some people try to put them separately, but without those information, this information is incomplete. So, the, all this information together, the phenome, the genome, the metabolome, transcriptome, all together, you know, and you can't do everything. So obviously, you know, you can imagine the complexities which are lying there in this genomics for improvement of crop plants. If you start with the market assisted bidding, that will be the simplest, simplest one, then a simply inherited trait and one gene, major gene, and you have one marker tightly linked, or the gene is cloned, gene-based functional marker, use marker assisted bidding, fine. You talk to Q, uh, I mean talk of QTL, then you have another layer of complexity coming in, and you have a linked marker. But you don't know, as you know, the QTLs express differently in different environments. You have epigenome and its control coming in. And epigenome is another complex area, another layer attached to that. You don't know how to really deal with this. So the whole area is full of challenges. The whole area is full of challenges. And more so horticultural crops because the you know, uh, uh, perennial nature of uh, these crops, you know, uh, often, you know, uh, creates many layers of complexities. 
because there are different seasons and then there are different uh, you know on developmental phases and then long period so i uh, dr kohli said so you have further layers of complexities there and uh, to understand that and epigenome variations in perennials very little understanding actually we don't understand uh, we don't understand actually biology is very poorly understood very very poorly understood the most poorly understood area is biology despite all the developments genome sequence doesn't give much i can tell you so that's the kind of you know scenario uh, which is there but sequencing it doesn't mean that you don't sequence <laughs> so unless you sequence you will not understand the genomes to start with so friends uh, you know i said the human side of it to to start with that you have to struggle you have to strive you have to aspire you have to uh, work alone even if you have to work alone not necessarily you have to work alone isolate yourself from others if it requires to work alone and uh, you know uh, uh, obviously if you want to be a pioneer you have to be alone there are many people obviously your journey would be very happy journey but a relaxing journey there are many people with you and then certainly you know you will be moving bit slowly because you will be chit chatting you will be talking to them you are learning from them so but it will be very enjoyable journey because you have others with you but if you are alone and you are trying to explore something which nobody else is doing then obviously as i said it will be the very very tough journey walking alone is very tough you might walk fast so that is what i said in the beginning but i'm sure all of you would uh, you know or do that and uh, uh, you have teachers now so teachers to guide you to hand hold you and then tell you but if you want to go beyond what teachers are telling then you have to struggle alone so that is the point which i wanted to tell you so are you prepared for that i don't know how many of you are prepared for that so i'm sure you know as teachers our job is to inspire you we were inspired by your, our teachers and i always uh, say that uh, today's uh, students are better than the teachers of today that's the reason why i say we have a bright future if the students of today are not better no better than the teachers we have a you know very very i would not use harsh words you know difficult future ahead so i i am sure you are all better than more bright uh, um, than each one of us uh, and uh, each one of your teachers it uh, you know more ideas you are in the digital era and digital era provides immense opportunities to be captured and also to be taken advantage of not to waste your time energy and also mind that's very dangerous waste your mind also sometimes get bogged down by something because of the digital platforms because you become a task so so that is what uh, you know the technology offers now and that time we didn't have and that was also one kind of a distraction if i see today and they were not there so you will we one way focus that way so you have to fight that distraction and stand there so i hope you will do that and uh, you will certainly do better than the teachers and uh, you will explore new areas just learning under this cast program it should be a very small component of your total learning and you have to go beyond that so this is a bit philosophical but i'm sure you will be able to do that and i also told you genomics in entirety the complexity of it and uh, don't start doing everything together so start step by step and i'm sure you will succeed 
You have to have a very good plan of action before you read thoroughly. If you don't do literature survey, you will be telling only in your thesis that you repeat what was said 20 years ago. And your results are confirmed, are supported by something which was done 20 years ago. So what is that new you have done? Is something which was done 20 years ago is supporting what you are doing today. So obviously you haven't done anything new. So our whole thesis will be full of this kind of discussion and interpretations. What is new and how do you put that in a proper perspective? That you must learn. My own students, I mean our own students from IRI and students from various institutions and universities, this is what is very, very important. And when you try to write your uh, even uh, review of literature, you know, copy para by para from different things and then put together, and then say that you have finished your literature, try review of literature, try to understand what is published, try to put four, five, six things, ten things together, collate the information, and have your own interpretation. That would be review of literature. And changing few sentences in between so that, you know, plagiarism software doesn't detect it will not really help you. If you want to build yourself, you must know how to really write. And literature collection is not outdated. Digital platforms, they provide, uh, you know, opportunities to you, as I said. But that should not really be actually misused. So that's the kind of thing you know you have to do and uh, so without taking more time there are teachers here, there are professors here and uh, guides here so you know give enough independence to the students. That should be part of training actually. You know, our guides say, you know, they will tell you something, but leave you, the whole world is open for you. You go with the idea, they will say, okay, go ahead, you do it. Not really fix in a frame everything tight and students can't move this way and that way and no ideas. And so, sometimes there will be not very important, brilliant ideas coming in, but it doesn't really matter. So, students should be given that kind of independence to explore their own ideas. And then only, you know, their own potential which is there would be coming to the fore. Otherwise, it will remain hidden. So, how do we really do that? And that should be part of our teaching and training. How do we actually teach our own faculty to give independence to the students to explore the unexplored so that their full potential expresses. So frequent interaction is important to get out new things from the students, not to just give what you have and impose on him that he doesn't have any scope to explore his or her own ideas. So I think this is also an important component of our own faculties getting actually exposed to and uh, you know, providing a catalytic environment for the best part of the students to be actually explored. I think this is what is very, very important. So I'm sure, and thanks to Dr. A.K. Singh, so we went around to the campus to see some of the new developments, and uh, I'm sure we will be moving faster to develop the campus and to make a green campus. Dr. Agarwal keeps emphasizing how do we make IRA as a green campus? And if we make green campus, everybody has to, you know, ride bicycles as we used to do, you know, in 80s. And uh, all the faculty and then students have to be ready for that. And not uh, two healers, you know. And uh, while in the process, you will have a healthier life. And if you cycle, we used to cycle from ISRI to agronomy and engineering. And uh, in that, you uh, know, uh, uh, and there is no time. Just, you know, b before classes, uh, you know, there is no time. Immediately after the previous class, you have to go to the other class. So, you can imagine. So, 
without proper breath and then breathlessly you have to ride cycles and then reach the other division. So that kind of situation is, it should be enforced on you. Should be enforced on you. For your own health. For your own sake. That's very, very important. And today, you know, in railway station, if you have to have a free pass, you have to go do some exercise. So that came in the newspaper. So, <laughs> so if you have to free, get a free pass to enter the platform and in railway station, so you have to do some exercise, squatting exercise. So that kind of things have to be promoted in IRI campus. And those who don't come with uh, their own vehicles and come with metro and then walk down and then walk here, they should be given some incentives. <laughs> okay. And in the campus also, those who don't walk, uh, don't uh, you know, drive their cars and then bicycles. And how do we incentivize? Students can be given two marks extra <laughs> for that. So <laughs> some incentivization we have to do to start with. Not after five years, everybody will be falling in line. So anyway, so so friends, uh, all the best, and I uh, have taken more time, and uh, I'm sure. Dr. Tusar Bera is now a proficient, uh, you know, molecular geneticist. With his uh, one-year training at uh, in uh, uh, U.S. Uh, postdoctoral research and all that, so so that uh, he, he would be actually leading. And Dr. Vishwanathan, I think we should be able to give them something beyond the course course which is designed uh, you know so uh, so genomics the translation part is fine but maybe something more in theory if that can be given so wish you all the very best have a wonderful stay productive stay i'm sure you'll enjoy your learning experience here at iri iri a premier institution we learn from here as students. And uh, this particular program of National Higher Education Project has given you opportunity. You know, in all the training programs, we used to only call faculty members teachers. But Dr. Agarwal, thanks for providing this opportunity to the project that now students are not, not only coming and training, taking training in the country, going abroad. Can you imagine 280 odd students going abroad, undergraduate students going abroad to various universities and visiting and learning what is really happening there? So that is something which is remarkable in this particular program, unparalleled. And I'm sure it will bring a sea change in our total thinking process and learning process. And I'm sure this program will also provide that kind of you know, learning experience to all of you. Go more exalted, more excited, and I'm sure you will be learning much more than what you know today. And that will help you not only in your own thesis work, even beyond. I'm sure you will be able to get that advantage here because of the dedicated teachers, because of the well-designed course, and also, you know, the new things that will be told to you. Wish you all the very best. Thank you, Dr. A.K. Singh, for inviting me. Thank you, sir, for sharing with us your experience and for giving a message to our trainees that anyone can achieve success through hard work, determination, and courage. Everything that has a beginning should end, and the end should be a happy one. And it is time to acknowledge those who have worked behind the curtains. So I request our Dean Ma'am, Dr. Rashmi Akarwal, to kindly give the formal vote of thanks. <coughs> Good morning, all of you. Our most respected and honorable uh, Dr. Tirlochan Mahapatraji, DGICR and Secretary Dear, who is the chief guest of today's function. Uh, Professor Chitranjan Kolte, Kole, who is a Raja Raman Fellow, NIPB, and a very renowned researcher. Uh, 
Dr. E.K. Singh, our uh, most respected director, and also Dr. R.C. Agarwal, a very dynamic leader, DDG Education at ICR headquarters. Dr. T.K. Behra, who is the course director of this particular training program, and also Professor of Vegetable Science. I see the course coordinators, head of the division, Dr. Shelly Praveen, and Dr. S.K. Singh, and Dr. Vishwanathan. Other faculty members, students, ladies and gentlemen, and most important, the trainees. As very well said by our honorable DG, that this is opportunity, you have got it, and you will be learning few things in these uh, few days, but you, it will open your mind. You can utilize the training given here for your not only the research program which you are doing, but also beyond. And uh, sir, we are very, very thankful to you, sir, for accepting our invitation and giving us so much of ideas, not only for the students and the trainees and also for the faculty, that there should be a very, very nice relation between the student and the faculty, so that student gives the free, is given free hand to do the research, give his inputs, and also give his thoughts to the research programs. So independence uh, given to the student in his or uh, her research work is a very important aspect. And the genomics area which you are taking up is a very, uh, very complex area. And very rightly said by our Honorable uh, DG that many challenges are there when you are working at genomics level, looking into the structure and functional genomics part of it. So all of uh, our brains. So thank you again, sir, for coming here. Uh, I would like to thank our DDG education, Dr. R.C. Agarwal, who is a leader and a very, very dynamic um, uh, um, uh, officer at ICR headquarters level. He is taking up all the higher education programs at national level and you have heard that how he is bringing out the networking of all the universities and also uh, coming uh, uh, um, encouraging the students at higher school level itself so that they are encouraged to take up agriculture as their subject of choice, not as a subject when they are failing in other entrance examination and they are getting into agriculture field. So thank you Dr. Agarwal for your dynamic leadership and also prof providing all the financial and other support from ICR headquarters. Thank you once again. I would like to thank our uh, uh, director IRI for all kinds of encouragement, support, guidance, and all inspirational words which he always keeps uh, giving us, uh, all the faculty and the students, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for giving all the support. Uh, Professor Chitranjan uh, Kole, I said that he's a uh, voracious reader, writer, editor and uh, a very uh, eminent researcher, which is reflected by the publications which has brought out more than 100, uh, roughly I think 130 publications on genomics itself he has brought out. So this is a very commendable job and uh, he has always, uh, always been propagating the genomics research at the country level. So we are very thankful, sir, uh, you, you came here and grace the occasion and uh, said many words of wisdom to all of us. Uh, I would like to thank Dr. Rab Behera. Very meticulously, he has planned this training program. And uh, as mentioned by many others, that horticultural crops were uh, given a little back seat. But now, uh, many crops have been sequenced and how these sequences can be, can be utilized. How this can lead to translational research and many other basics and the advanced uh, practicals and the uh, theory uh, and uh, lectures have been organized by Dr. T.K. Behra and his team and uh, dedicated faculty who will be taking lectures and practicals during the course program. So I am very thankful to all the dignitaries uh, on the dais and of the dais I am thankful to all the faculty, all the uh, heads of the division who came here and graced the occasion and most important all the trainees and once again congratulations from my side that you have been selected for this a very important training program and this will definitely help you in your uh, present research work and also in, in your future endeavors. With these words I once again th thank everyone and those who work behind the curtain, uh, stage managers and others who help. So thank you once again all of you. Thank you. We have come to the end of the program. There will be a group photograph followed by a cup of tea. Thank you, Angel, for comparing so well. Angel, you know, eh? Good. Angel, you know, eh? Good.